in the Civil War. And in, in the beginning, we suffered some serious defeats. Uh, morale for the North was about as low as it could get. Mm. But you know what? As the word got back to the troops that their families were still surviving and that commerce was allowing the North to, to remain vibrant, boosted their morale. It boosted the morale of the administration of Lincoln and ultimately led to the, to the defeat of the South and benefited the entire country. Well, and, and while the, the men were all fighting that terrible war, the women here felt they needed to do something. And so I was, I'm, I'm proud to say that I was part of one of the first Red Cross groups that formed here in the La Crosse area. So some of the local wives and, and sisters and daughters of some of these soldiers we sent packages, sometimes we, we mended or made uniforms, we, we did what we could. Sometimes the soldiers would come back here, we, we would nurse them, we would read to them. It was, it was a terrible time. No, Mary's quite a lady. Everyone was, was involved somehow. With, she's with quite a lady. She, she's quite modest as well because oh. uh, besides being involved with the Red Cross, uh, she was the first choir director for, oh. for Christ the Episcopal <laughs> Church. Just, in fact, maybe she'd sing a song. Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I haven't warmed up my voice properly today. But my family was a, a charting uh, or a charter founding member of Christ Episcopal Church back in 1857, and I also taught Sunday school. But we don't we don't want to go there with that. When you think about you know going back to the 1860s, uh, if you went down to the Black River, it was such a huge source of shipping lumber down the river that you could literally uh, walk from one shore to the other uh, on the logs. I didn't even know logs. there was a river there. It was so full and covered with all that lumber. And that's how prosperous things were. Mm -hmm. I remember one day in downtown La Crosse, uh, we observed, I don't know, how many wagons, uh, Mary would say. Well, I counted at least 100, 125? Well, 150 to be exact. Not that oh. I was counting, but <laughs> <laughs> 150 wagons all headed downtown La Crosse mm -hmm. to Pearl Street, mm -hmm. and that's where they'd meet with Mr. Candish, who bought wheat and grain, and he, he offered the best price, yes. Mary yes. knew him oh, well. He was, well, he was a very honest man, and he was a very fine businessman, and everyone knew him, and, and he did offer the best price. And they would go down there, sell their wheat and corn to him, take it over to the elevators that mm -hmm. hoisted it up, poured it into wait, waiting freight cars, and shipped it off to Milwaukee, and from Milwaukee, ports throughout the world. You know, after, after the war, uh, Mary had a wonderful idea, uh, still another bit. She actually is the brains behind the operation, you should know that. <laughs> I, I happened to mention something about a sawmill in passing conversation. And so Mary had the idea that uh, as long as we have all this, all this lumber and it's on its way to sawmills further down, down the river, why don't we open up our own sawmill? Well, we weren't the only ones who thought of that. As a matter of fact, in one year, four sawmills opened up in La Crosse. Mm -hmm. But the bliss, or I should say the sill bliss, not sill first, <laughs> the sill bliss lumberyard uh, was one of the first to open in this, in this community, remained open mm -hmm. for a long, long time. In fact, we operated the uh, sill bliss lumberyard long after I retired uh, from the railroad. And then one day, at about the age of 85, I slipped and fell and, and fractured my hip. And uh, I can tell you, back in the 18, 1800s, uh, a broken hip uh, was a pretty serious mm -hmm. uh, situation. I was ultimately hospitalized at St. Francis Hospital, uh, where in the end I succumbed to my injuries. And, uh, but Mary continued on. Yes, that was a very dark day for me. That was in 1901 when William left me and I remained in our house for uh, almost 20 more years. I did live in that house for a total of 61 years of my 81 years until uh, about Christmas time of 1918. Um, I, although during World War I I had also been involved again in the Red Cross um, program. And then um, around Christmas time of 1918 I just, I knew something wasn't quite right and I, I became ill for several weeks and was hospitalized. I'm not sure if you knew that or not, dear, but um, I, I ended up moving back home, but uh, 
I did pass away in May of 1919. It was the day after our anniversary, dear. Please do you don't. remember the date? Uh, please, Mary, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I passed away on May 25th. Mary's favorite so. flower uh, was oh. lilies at a valley. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, Mary, tell them what the kids did. Well, on my casket, they had, they had picked many of the lilies of the valley that I had planted those 50 years earlier. And they made a blanket of lilies of the valley on my casket, which was very sweet. And then I joined you here at this site. And, uh, and Mary and, and, and I lived to be some of the oldest people in yes. the cross. Uh, being 85 years old back in the day was uh, uh, quite unusual. Yes. Uh, so we enjoyed a happy life together, and yes, I believe we contributed uh, to uh, the city of La Crosse and to the ultimate victory uh, during the Civil War. Yes.